Okay, hello, hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to Me vs. Me. I am Patrick Nzonzi and over to my left is a special guest that we have. You've probably seen him in some of the promo ads that we've done for this segment called Britain the Gap. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? So I'm Dylan Malloy. Dylan Malloy, okay. Cousins. Okay. Um, not much about me really. Okay, so um, obviously we know what we're here to talk about today. So we're basically going to be talking about uh, Bridging the Gap. Bridging the gap between your generation mm -hmm. and the parents' uh, generation, which is above my generation too. Mm -hmm. um, the first question I'm going to ask you is, do you believe that there's a generational gap between your generation and the parents' generation? How huge do you think this gap is? What type of impact has it had, whether it be negative or positive? But before we get to that, I want you to speak about my generation first. If you feel like there's a um, huge generational gap between my generation and your generation. Yeah. So I'm going to start off with just your views on the generational gap between the various um, generations. Mm -hmm. And I start off with my generation before we actually dive into the main topic, which is the the older generation, the parents' generation. So how far is your generation extend to? Okay, my generation. So we're talking about um, 40 right. to, mm. let's say, let's say 40 to, 40 to 20. To 20, like yeah. 8, cap 28. Yeah, yeah, let's cap yeah. 20, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, that's a wide range, in my opinion. Yeah. I think that kind of gap isn't really too too big because what we would have learned you guys would have been in your kind of 20 late 20s mid 20s teens so that kind of era we were bred into was really low as you know so that kind of gap isn't too great because you guys are already not that far you're quite far from mm. the older generation i think right. that gap between you guys is not just as big but mm -hmm. it's still very big in terms mm. of culture in terms of just you know your everyday lives the era changed because society got a lot more digital when you guys were around really. yeah yeah so i wouldn't even say that it's too much from us and you guys i think there's still like as time progresses obviously even it's beyond me really that like, as time progresses the kids younger than me they're a bit different like they're a bit more like life just goes more and more extreme nowadays so right i feel as though the gap between us isn't too big but it's just I'd say our era is a bit more extreme, more hands-on, more right. digital, really, in a digital mm -hmm. age where everything now has changed. So how we view each other and, and all of that, like, it's all changed. And like, there's a there's a more pressure to be a certain way in this era than there, there's ever been, in my opinion. Right. Because there's a lot more money in the world. There's a lot more eyes on each other. There's a lot more. There's just many things to consider in life now than before. I always say I'd rather be in that generation because. I said that generation. Yeah, Which generation? Your are you generation. My so generation. Okay. I'd rather be in your generation because. Right. I don't know. I just like naturally have you know more of affinity to those times. Right. Like you guys got to enjoy a lot more without social pressure. Or okay. Without that kind of whole thing around it, you guys mm -hmm. really just got to enjoy life. Like a lot of the kids I know now, some of them didn't even play out. Mm. You know what I mean yeah. that that wasn't an option like it wasn't an option in your area it was kind of we all played out that's just what we did right so that's kind of you know mm. you, you mentioned something that was key that you, mm -hmm. you mentioned social pressures mm -hmm. now i believe in life that there's always you can always see like an advantage and disadvantage mm -hmm. to something yeah mm -hmm. so in terms of like the social area that we live in mm -hmm. internet social mm -hmm. media etc Mm -hmm. um, I want you to start off with the disadvantages right. or the negative impact or like the social pressures which you just said and once you do that I want you to speak about some of the advantages mm -hmm. that the social era has mm -hmm. that my generation maybe didn't have well not maybe didn't mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. when I was younger when I was your age mm -hmm. and when I was a teenager so let's start off with um, some of the um, dive into some of the social pressures that you face uh, being a teenager so around my age, just materialism, I think that probably is the biggest one right now. Right. Because 
there's a whole thing about having the best thing, having the nicest things, looking the nicest. Um, it, it kind of branches into a lot more issues. So mm-hmm. money shaming, big right. one. Yeah. Big one. If you don't have certain things, you're not wearing a certain look or you're not buying certain things and people look at you differently. Right. That trickles down into just basic look shaming. But just a whole idea of a ideal look and an ideal way of living life right and because that's the most mainstream thing because we're in an era now where hip-hop's the most influential culture so yeah anything that these hip-hop rappers artists do trickles down into modern day society so yes mm-hmm. you want to have you want to look as much as, as like them as possible so that comes to having material goods right really. mm-hmm. and i think that in itself is a issue that won't be getting addressed mm-hmm. i think it's an issue that isn't really started with our generation. It's just yeah. more being amplified by the fact that we can now all see everything. I mean, your generation, everyone did what they did anyways. Right. It's just now that we see a lot more of them and we can see everyone, we can see each other. Yeah. It becomes a bit of, okay, jealousy comes in and then people start to shame each other and then it just goes downhill like that. And it, you know, that's, I think that's the, the main disadvantage. As far as advantages, a lot of people are able to be socially mobile now. Yeah. So using social media platforms to benefit themselves financially, um, socially, you know, improve their social standings. Uh, the fact that everyone's interconnected now. Yeah. So I can contact some people from here and, and we can always kind of be one. And it helps in certain situations like the BLM movement, right. that everyone got behind that. When, when certain injustices happen, we can now stand together as one properly and, and actually have a proper voice. Yeah. Right. So I think it, it, it's, it goes both ways with everything in life. But I don't think our generation is, or our era, the social era is probably, it's not one of the worst eras. I wouldn't say it's bad. I just say it's different. And it's all the negativity from previous eras just amplified. Right. So everything that has already existed in mm. life as a problem is now just amplified. Yeah. Now, how much of it would you say is stems from an identity crisis because you mentioned the fact that people watch music videos to see rappers like you said uh rap music hip-hop is the most influential culture right now at the moment and um probably maybe during my time when i was uh, a lot younger as well um how much of it do you think stems from identity crisis would you say that your generation is suffering that too yeah big, big time. you can see it everywhere really I think everyone kind of wants to be too similar right? Mm-hmm. and too afraid to be different. Like, mm-hmm. Remember, I gave you a contemporary example. I used to go to school with a bunch of people. Right? They'd all come in the same look right. all the time in school. Mm-hmm. Same bag, same jackets. Even though it wasn't the exact same jacket, it was a rotation of jackets, yeah. same exact bag. And I just look at them and I'm like, Oh, like you guys are all doing the same kind of... Like, mm-hmm. Does no one think to themselves, like, why, why did I do this? Why did I buy it? Today? Yeah, yes. But they do that because it's, you know, mass hysteria, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Everyone's doing it, I should do it too. Like, yeah. That's what it is. Um, it comes down to FOMO as well. Like People want to go to places because other people are going to places. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't want to be that person that didn't go there because, you know what I mean, they can't be there themselves, really. They, they have to exist to a, exist, a, belong to an idea, belong yeah. to a community, really. Yeah. And not necessarily belong to themselves first. So they'll do anything to fit in. And I think that's, so that's a big problem. Right. All right. So, um, how do we overcome that? I mean, because you do get certain people who notice the fact that, okay, these group of people are just following each other. So you can see that there's a lack of identity somewhere. Uh, like, what would have stopped you from following what everyone else was doing, as opposed to saying, I'm going to do what I choose to do? Um, was there someone that you could use as an example or there certain influences that helped you to stand on your own and not necessarily follow what the masses were doing even though like friends can be very influential especially if you're with them uh almost on a daily basis so what helped you to stay to say that i'm gonna do things my way and not necessarily follow i mean to a certain degree when certain things are trendy it's trendy it's trendy yeah, yeah. we go through certain eras where we dress a certain way yeah, we just, even use a certain slang as well yeah so but where do we draw the line and say okay this is as far as i'm gonna go 
I'm not going to just follow everything that everyone's doing just because a certain rapper or musician or public figure is doing it. Mm. That's a difficult one. I've been mm. honest, difficult one. Because mm. I, I wouldn't say I'm the most dissimilar person yeah. out there. You yes. know what I mean? I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that are different. But I learned from quite a young age to just kind of be myself unapologetically. Yeah. yeah. I think that was always what I, yeah, I, I, I can vouch for that. Yeah, naturally, <laughs> naturally it was like a, I wasn't too far from I'm not like some I don't do really vastly different things. Yeah. I'm just me. Like I just me, I just enjoy being me. I'm comfortable. Yeah. A lot of that came from my, my older brother. He like whenever people would think about my older brother, they'd have an idea of him that yeah. other people like you just imagine you are some big tough guy who just you know what I mean yeah. you can't bang everyone up. Like, that that went Enzo. Yeah. You know what I mean? He is a big tough guy. If you've seen him he's hench, right? But he's a cool guy, like yeah. he, he was just him. So I learned from the get just to be me, really. Enzo was Enzo, I was me. So right. he was he never really like I can't compare him to anyone in my life. Mm. Me, so constantly being around him and, and him being incomparable made me think, okay, cool. Why is everyone else so similar and, and right. we're different? We're not, yeah. we're not that different. We're not just us, really. So I think for me it was probably my family, most likely my family, especially because right. we're all kind of different. Yeah. Within our household, so I've got. It's a family of four kids, and all of us are different yeah. in our own different ways. Mm-hmm. So, just from my household, it wasn't enough to just be the same as him. Yeah. Else, you know what I mean? so that's not that, that was never a thing for me. So when I got to school now, I did struggle with that early doors. I did struggle with, especially the latter ages of school when you're in like year eleven and ten and twelve. When you're like, when you're more accustomed to society, really, when you're more socially active. Yeah, you do struggle with okay, cool. I'm not really comfortable being so different all the time. Yeah, and then you have some hardships because of that. And then when that, I think one thing I had a situation that hit hit me. It was like, why am I even trying to impress these people? Why am yeah. I trying to be? You know what I mean, so I was like, yeah, forget that. And I dropped that quickly. Then it got to a point where I was like, yeah, what, like, just be me. But I think to go back to your point, I don't know if there's a way to really combat that right now. You know what I mean? Like, I think this is, a, this is an issue, it's not an issue that has really recently come around. Like I said, everything's just been amplified. So with the amplification, to tackle it, it's very difficult to shift the entirety of society. Right. If we make one change, everyone's going to make the change just because we're making it. You know? Yeah. There's no real change in it. Mm-hmm. There's no real like shift. I think people are going to be people. And those individuals who are comfortable with being individual, like in, like their own individual, then they prosper more. Really, I, I found that like more common in my life. Really, but as far as change, I'm not necessarily the most hopeful person when it comes to that. Right. But you know, who knows? You, know, you never know what happens in 10, 15 years. Right. Okay. Now, tell me about the advantages of the social era. Yeah. So, so yeah, just leading back to everyone's in, interconnected, really. Dreams are a lot, are a lot more likely. Like yeah. they're a lot less like dreams. You know, what I mean? for me, what I do in my day to day life is a dream to everyone else. Right. They don't expect me, or they don't expect anyone to think the way I think and do the things I do. Yeah. But it's like I saw an opportunity because of, you know, social not necessarily social media, but the social era. I was able to realize these opportunities earlier than expected. Right. Okay, cool. Act on them, really. So it helps a lot. Everyone, everyone's, everyone's changed. Like none of these rappers are like a lot of these rappers are making it out at the ends and, and out of social situations that are really troubling them. And with money, people say money doesn't buy you happy. It doesn't, but it gives you more time to figure out your problems. Yeah. So a lot more of these influencers now are going through hardships mm-hmm. and then living through that and then passing down their knowledge. For other people to attain and, 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 and really latch on to so you'll see more successful people speaking down to, to us and we can feel connected to them in a way mm. and learn from them so being able to see someone's mistakes even something like that like i've known so many people's mistakes of social situations that when i blow i'm not going to make that mistake right. or i'll try to avoid that mistake because yeah. i've seen you make it mm-hmm. and this is how i can avoid that so i think being able to see people and being interconnected, it has its benefits, but has a lot of negatives as well, to be fair. 
the benefits are benefits. Like, I'd rather be in the situation now than before, in my opinion. Right. Like my parent generation. Mm. I'd rather be mine than yes, this. than that's right. Yeah. Why? So, why do you say that? I'm more, like. I think it was a lot more hopeful now. Yes, you know I mean? right. Okay. It's a lot more hopeful now. Like, the opportunities were given in comparison to them. That's a lot more hopeful. Mm-hmm. The, the, the way society was in general, I think a lot of social issues are getting tackled more and more day to day on a day to day basis. Pause. So I think a lot more like social issues are getting tackled on a day to day basis. So mm-hmm. we go from, from the whole movement of. Uh, uh, what's it called? I was just, it just slipped my mind, but I was, I was thinking of sexism, right. uh, racism, all of that. Yeah. The more apparent it is now in society, the more frowned upon it is. Right. But when it was apparent before in their generation, yeah. mm-hmm. my, dad, my dad always used to say, like, if they were blatantly racist, yes, you couldn't were, do anything. Like I experienced that. it when I was young. Yeah. And I you was a teenager, could, yeah. And it was difficult to do things. Yeah, you, you can't, can't really, combat yeah. that. There's no mm. one really, you know, you can confide in or even connect with. Because, right. you know, everyone's just kind of like, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. But now, obviously, people are fighting back against it, even though there's drawbacks to that. It's better than, you know, just putting up with it. I yeah. think I've, I've experienced next to no racism in my life. Mm. I've experienced next to none. And it, I genuinely believe I haven't experienced any racism. Yeah. Like straight, blatant, like, okay, this was a racist. Never, never in my life. So, and that's crazy to think, because mm. I can tell you everyone older I know always has a story. Yeah. Always. Everyone has a story. Mm. Everyone has a story. So that's a big one for me. I think our generation is a lot more progressive. Right. And, and that word progressive is a couple meanings as well. Yeah. Because, uh, boy, the older generation are a lot more stubborn than us <laughs> in, that, in that sense. Because obviously they've gone through hardships. Yeah. It's hard to be like, hard to look at us who haven't gone through the same things and, you know, have that connection with us and really connect with us. Okay, I was a kid once with, they kind of look, like a lot of people kind of look at us like, okay, you guys have it so much better than us. Mm-hmm. You should be doing X, Y, Z. It's kind of, it's kind of how it is. Okay, now, um, we spoke about mm-hmm. my generation to a certain degree. Um, what would you say you took from my generation that you would apply? I think I do. I know you guys had that. For real. <laughs> what would I say? Because earlier you mentioned the fact that you would have liked to have been. In oh, my generation, yeah, okay, yeah. because of the fact yeah. that you felt like we were more hands on. Yeah, I think you guys. We, 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 to a certain degree, we avoided some of the social pressures. Mm, yeah. I think you so, guys were just, you know, like, you guys had a lot more hands on experience, a lot of. Because it's harder to co- connect with people um, without social media unless you're in person. Right. So a lot of the time, you guys had stuff in person and went through stuff face to face and developed kind of closer connections with people. Yeah. Because. Yes, I, I'm with my guys all the time, but a lot of the time we go through long breaks of not speaking to each other yeah. in person. Mm-hmm. We just be texting type and all of that. Yeah. And a lot more memories are lost because of that. Yes. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I feel like you guys had a lot more childhood memories. I know me, when I was younger, me and my brother used to go out and play football all the time. And yes. if he wasn't playing with me, I'd be outside playing football. Yeah. And that was, instead, of, that was only the first, what, nine years of my life? Yeah. That would have been, without a PS3, that would have been my entire childhood. Yeah, I mean? yeah, exactly. Then I got a PS3 and then it was over. Like, yeah. So I think a lot of you guys didn't have that kind of key. Like, obviously, you guys had consoles. I'm not saying you guys are dinosaurs, yeah. but the consoles, <laughs> the consoles weren't as attractive as ours now. Yeah, I mean, for point. our time in that era, yeah, of course, yeah it was. Like having, having a 32-bit yeah. Yeah. Um, console mm. was amazing because mm. at one point, it was an 8-bit. The Nintendo was yeah, an 8-bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, as crazy as that sounds, mm. it was an 8-bit. Mm-hmm. When the 16 bit came out, I was like, Yeah, so yeah. 32, it was like, Wow, yeah, wow. by the time 64 yeah, came 64. out, we thought like we was in the Jetson era, yeah. like flying yeah, cars yeah, yeah, are coming yeah. up next. That's what you yeah. call 64 bit. Uh, right now, it's what mm-hmm. I don't know, 64, that was like Nintendo, oh, that was Nintendo old. 64, that was what year was that? 2001, one, yeah, maybe. Um, uh, that was PlayStation 2, 64 bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, PlayStation 3 comes out 2007. Mm. So that's uh, what, what bit is that? 64 times 2. Come on, you're smart. Oh, 64 times 2? Yeah. You, 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 so you must be 128. 128. 128. 128. 128. 128. 128. 128. 128. 128. 128. 128. 128. 128. 128. 128. 128. 128. 128. 128
Yeah. So then after that, you have the PlayStation 4. Yeah. They multiply that by two, and you get... 128 times two? Yeah. Uh, 156. 100. Oh, two, two, three, two, six. Two, five, six, yeah, you get the two, five, six. Yeah. And now the five has come out, so you multiply that by two. Wait, you got, no, you ain't got me yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's real two. Real two. Yeah. So, I was excited that I'm 32. Wait, three oh two. that's hard, right? It's five oh two. sorry. Five oh two. Yeah, about five oh two. Okay, so, I was excited that I have a 32 bit console. So, What was exciting to me back then, okay, it's not going to be as exciting now, but reflecting back on it, it was a great time. It was great Because like you said, we actually played outside. Mm -hmm. We had consoles, which was great, but we'll play it for a while. We'll mm -hmm. go outside. And it was more of an issue for us to stay outside because our parents wanted to drag that, us mm -hmm. back into the house. Mm -hmm. Hurry up, come back in the house now. Whereas now it's mm -hmm. kind of like, go outside and play. Yeah, go, outside go outside and speak with exactly. your people. So it's, it's just crazy how things have turned so much where it's like trying to push them out because it's like almost like we become programmed on and uh, turn into like machines mm -hmm. to a certain degree yeah, 100%. where social skills are just no, 100% out of the window. Out of the window. When I say social skills, I mean no, I real life interaction yeah, no. with people. What, to some, the of my, where, some of my, God bless them, some of my friends, um, not my immediate friends if anyone watches this, but I know some people that are cripplingly social awkward. Like yeah. very, very, very social. And that's because they were sheltered from quite a young age okay. and kept inside. You mm. know what I mean? But that's kind of specific examples. If we're talking on a general scale, yeah. I think a lot of people are but yeah, a lot of people are age are lacking social skills. I mm. think basic things like even me to some extent. There's some skills I've learned as I've gotten more active. Right. So and I feel like I should have learned these a while ago. Mm. So a lot of people were sheltered from a young age and and a lot of people just weren't even sheltered, were just kept inside. They just wanted to stay inside. Okay? Yeah, right. So much so that that's all they know. Yeah. So when it's time to interact with people and be in certain environments and groups. Yeah, that's definitely an element. So when people are in certain environments and certain rooms, they're quiet. Yeah. They're kind of to themselves. Like I always like some people are introvert. I get introverted, naturally introverted people. But people that just go overboard to keep themselves to themselves. That yeah. people, I'm very scared of because it's like, yeah. what are you in this life for? You know what I mean? Like, exactly. What are you trying to experience here? Is it just cool? I'm just me. I'm just, I don't speak to people. I'm just like whatever. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, yeah. Those type of people. I'm just there. Like, okay, you're cool. You're just dead, isn't it? Cause, who are you just like just gonna sit there screw face the whole time, you know what I mean? There's no point of what's the point of, of you being here in the first place? Mm -hmm. A lot of people lack that. They just lack that kind of basic social skills just to be, you know, just not even entertaining people. I'm not saying be the life of the room, but just to communicate and connect with people. You mm -hmm. never know who you're gonna meet. Right. So it's one of those. Things. Okay. I think a lot of you a lot of you people like in your generation are a lot more networked and connected with each other. Yes. You know him and he knows that, and you guys know each other through that. Right. A lot of us do that as well because, you know, socials, we can just follow someone, even though we've never spoken to them, never met them. Yeah. But we're not actually as connected yeah. as you guys are. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, what would you say to someone in your generation who makes a statement such as, you know what, the parent generation, we've lost them, forget about them. Let's connect with the generation under them. We'll learn from them, we'll make it with them. Forget the older one. I, I, for me, look, I, I work in the sales business. So yeah. I work in the football industry. So a lot of people are older, older, older in the football industry. Yeah. So if, if, when I hear something like that, I'm like, okay, being silly. Because mm -hmm. you don't know who and you're learning from and what, like, you don't know what they have to teach you. Yeah. You know okay. I mean? It's lessons that you can't be ignorant in life. In life, full stop. You never know. You just have these conversations with people and you never know what you, you'll take from it, regardless. Yeah. People of any background, any age, anything. So I think that a lot happens a lot in our generation. There's a lot of ignorance. Yeah. There's a lot of, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I know this, I know that. I've, I've been a victim of that as well in my life. And I can tell you that for free. A lot of, I know this, I know that, and hard-headed ignorance. I think that's in every generation, really. I think it's in every generation in different forms. Yeah. For example, the eldest generation's ignorance would be they think they know much better than us because yeah. they live longer. Yeah. And it just like it just goes down naturally. I think I know better than the generation below me, I'll tell yeah. you that. Yeah. yeah. 
just because I've lived longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. So you gotta understand in life. I think what is there's a there's a theory, postmodernist theory, that everything in life is just pastiche, which I like to add to my life or attribute to my life. I think there's no experience that someone else hasn't experienced. Not none. Might not be as specific to me. Yeah. But there's no experience that hasn't been experienced by someone. Right, right, right. So someone in the elder generation might have experienced some form of my experience and I can learn from what they did and learn from that. And life is that like pattern, it's like football, patterns of play that can be repeated. It yeah. just gets repeated. Yes, yes. We, at some point, are going to be at war again. Yeah. It's just going to happen. Yeah. The scale of the war and what happens in the war will 100% be different Yeah. we live in a different time. Yeah. But there will be war again. There yeah. will be certain things that happen over and over and over again in life. So people experience a lot of things. People have experienced what you've experienced. It's just how life is. So with that kind of comment, it's just basic ignorance. I can't. Basic ignorance, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you say you could understand where they're coming from though? A hundred percent. What would you say? Would you say it's mainly frustration? It's frustration. Yeah. When two hard-headed people go against each other, yeah. you don't get anywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? So a lot of people have interactions with older generations where they feel disrespected mm-hmm. and that goes both ways. Yeah. Both sides feel disrespected and then there's no resolution yeah and because of that frustration goes up yeah they don't understand that's the most common sense common sentence they don't understand well my parents don't understand me uh everyone's a kid once it's not that they don't understand you mm. they understand they don't understand you like yeah. that's that's what it is right yeah they they get it but they're not like okay why aren't why aren't you like this or mm. why isn't because i was like this when i was a kid or you know what i mean they don't understand how it's different but I just think with stubbornness, the way life is now, <laughs> stubbornness just doesn't get anyone nowhere. There's no progression. Right. Would you say part of it is a cry for help as well? Like as it in, I need you. I want to be connected to you, but you are not there. You know what? Let me find someone else. Cry because frustration can only come when there's something that you actually want to do. Want to do, yeah. But it's not happening. So. Can you be frustrated at something that you don't care about? No. No, you can't. Yeah. So well, you say, I, yeah. A lot of people do that now. Yeah. No. I mean, like. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Do, do you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. it's uh, it's indirect. Like, you know what? Forget them. But really, truly, it's a case of I wanted you, I wanna, but yeah. you chose not to. So I'm going to go and yeah, get that's, that's exactly, I think that's the help exactly elsewhere. I think that's exactly what it is. I think mm-hmm. a lot of these interactions come from our expectation of. Basically, our expectation for them to guide us, right? Blindly, guide us. So, like unconditionally, that should be your job to guide us. Yeah. In the same way, their expectation is for us to follow them yeah. unconditionally. And a lot of that doesn't work. It has to be on a case-to-case basis. Right. You can't treat everyone how you were treated. You can't treat people, or not necessarily, how you. Of course, how you want to be treated. Yeah. But some people might not, you know, react well to that. Yeah. I mean, I know how I want to be treated to certain people. If I say certain things to certain people, they don't react to that well. Yeah. So I think everyone needs to be treated differently. I think a lot of the time, the older generation have, and our generation have one way of thinking. And if it doesn't align with that, then... It's wrong. It's wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. so there's no kind of... Yeah, it goes back to stubbornness. You know? I mean, there's no kind of mutual level of understanding no middle ground where we can be like okay cool let's meet in the middle you want it this way I want it this way but right. we can't all win mm-hmm. you know, that's the best way to go forward with it really I think it's, a, it's an issue that is only I think it's an issue that gets broken down more and more in society now because mm-hmm. a lot of people are becoming more of a one community in the sense that everyone regardless of age now you're in some sort of social space right so you are part of the community regardless. Yeah. Kids now make what's cool on the internet. Okay. So we influence or oh, our generation, I would say from my age <coughs> to mm. around sixteen to about twenty twenty eight even. Mm. Thirty. We make what's cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? So our culture is what's every what you'll see everywhere nowadays. So I think to that to, to that then so would you would it be fair to say that there's been a power shift in yeah, terms of the so. older generation they were in control if you wanted media content put out and influence you had to go through the 
uh, major TV yeah, networks and whatnot, the, the BBC, the Channel 4, the MTVs and that, and they were ran by mm -hmm. the older generation. Yeah, yeah, Whereas yeah. now, like the younger generation say, you know what, we're taking matters into our own hands now, we're creating a YouTube account, a Facebook, a TikTok, and we are creating our content and we're putting it out there and it's getting to people quicker. That's they exactly don't need a household mm -hmm. that subscribes to Sky on a monthly basis yeah. or whatnot. Yeah. They can do it from their yeah. device, exactly. in their own privacy, exactly. etc. cetera. So, um, then would you say that whether intentionally or unintentionally your generation and the older generation are at war to a certain degree uh, due to the power shift like i mean right at, now who's at, really who's really in control and influencing is war, it them or is it your generation influencing yeah. your generation i think at war is an extreme yeah i think Shout out to um, Soul Lovemore, he's a mentor of mine. Right. He works at a, um, he work, he has his own Lovemore Sports and YMB, uh, YM, whatever. Is he on social media, etc. Yeah, 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 he's on social media. Okay, so you well. can see his social media right here, right now. So mm -hmm. if you want to get in touch with him, mm -hmm. do go for it. He, like, he, he works in a basically commercial space. Yeah. So he knows all these big brands all that are head high. Like, they're leaded by, led by, sorry, led by older generation people mm -hmm. and people of age mm -hmm. they are now starting to hire people in our generation yes to combat this power shift yeah. so i wouldn't say we're at war in per se yeah i think a, like i would say a couple years ago maybe there was kind of a we want to kind of still do what we're doing yeah but he always tells me that nowadays they're looking for culture fits all oh, right they are looking for people that can represent the culture because that is what's popular that's what that's where the power is so now all these brands are looking at people that can fit into that kind of yeah. niche for them because yes. they realize we're going to lose out on a lot if yeah. we don't start if we don't connect, get connecting with yeah. people. Mm -hmm. So I feel like not necessarily at war. I think there's some mutual like mutual ground now yeah. nowadays. Mm -hmm. Like um, you see, Chunks was on Sky Sports. That was big for everyone mm -hmm. because Sky Sports didn't employ anyone that were really in the culture. Like yes. That. Now everyone's kind of rushing to get the next best culture of it and yeah. whoever's popular and that that's why i think the beauty in social media is allows us to be socially mobile whereas my parents generation how many people even now however successful they were were still kind of like separated from main not mainstream side but they were still in power shift they were still in control by certain people yeah for example you hear all the horror stories about the labels doing certain things and and, and and taking money off certain artists and controlling their entire careers, nowadays would never run. You mm. can't run because yeah. everyone's too smart now. Everyone yeah. realizes we're the commodity, the power's yeah. here. Yeah. You have to do certain things for us. Right. Otherwise, we'll do it independently right. or we'll go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So I think the power is definitely in our hands and I think the, it won't ever, it's not going to turn back. I think now that we've made, we've made that realization, now that every kid's dream is more attainable, it's never going back. All right, I like that. Every kid dream is more attainable. It's never going back. So, so would it be fair to say that it's you need to develop a mindset of running the race, winning it, and then passing the baton to the next ones who are coming? Yeah, you mentioned you mentioned a um, key word. You, you mentioned a cultural fit. Mm -hmm. So, basically, identifying what's working, mm -hmm. going with what makes sense. Mm -hmm. So let's be honest, someone who's lived longer than us are going to automatically say, I know better than you, I've lived longer than you. Mm -hmm. So ego mm -hmm. gets in the way. Mm -hmm. And even sometimes when they see that what you are doing is working, but because of their ego, they'll try and probably boycott it mm -hmm. and try and make it work themselves mm -hmm. without you. So I um, I've, I've experienced that. Yeah, you've experienced that. Could you tell us a little bit about that? I've experienced that in my field of work, people yeah. telling me my dream isn't yeah. isn't attainable. Yeah. I can't do this. Can't, yeah. I don't believe you can do this. Unrealistic. Yeah. It's unrealistic mm. because I couldn't do it. Yeah, because they couldn't yeah. do it. So oh, right, because, right, right. Oh, I've been in. I've seen this before. I've been in situations where mm. this, that, and it's all personal to them. Yeah, and I always say I can't apply my personal story to you. Right, I'm different to you. You have different skills, different skill set. Everything's different, really. So, in my field of work, no one would ever imagine me 
having the success I've already had. Mm. I haven't even had that much success yet, but mm. just that little pocket of success is enough for people to go, okay, yeah, wow, you know what I mean? So I feel like, damn, I forgot the question. Um, being boycotted, someone believing, not believing that you can do it because they felt like, mm. basically. All right, so I feel like that's, there's a lot, there's a lot of that, there's a lot, there's a lot of, you know, we, could, we couldn't do it, so you guys can't do it, type mm -hmm. stuff, you know right. what I mean? So, yeah, like you were saying, I think a lot of it is now us proving what we can do, passing it on to the next generation, right. and being like, okay, we did this, okay, cool, how far can you take this? Now? Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's, we let, like, it's a foundation, imagine, right. it's like, it's like a water level. Yeah, right. right. Let's say it was at its lowest. Mm -hmm. Your generation brought it up to about mid level. Right, We've right. taken it higher. Right. Next generation is going to take it higher. Yes, that's what it's about. Yeah. And that's Up what it, yeah. it needs to be. I, I, like, I've got quite a big ego myself. Mm -hmm. I really don't like if I did. Like, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't really feel too happy if someone younger than me did what I did better right. than me. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I can be humble and admit to myself, you know what? That's him. Yeah. I laid this foundation as well. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? yeah. like, if it weren't for me, yeah. I'm not going to try to take his success yeah. and, and and kind of claim it. I'm not going to claim his glory, but if it weren't for us or weren't for you guys mm. and it weren't for the guys before you, there's no me, there's mm. no him, there's no nothing. But we got to just all move with that mentality that we're all running the same race. Yeah. Yes. But certain people are going to go further distances yeah. because of us. Yeah. 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 I mean, because we wouldn't be where we are today if it wasn't for the previous one, like the foundation. And I believe that the key is actually us putting ourselves in a position where we can genuinely celebrate the success yeah, exactly. of others. Exactly. And that's the, that's the key exactly. to growth and development. Imagine, like, I've just thought of this analogy now. Imagine it like a relay. Yeah, it's we're, exactly. Yeah. We're all going to run the same distances. Yeah. We just start from different places. Yeah, we start and finish in different places. Yeah, start yeah. finish in different yeah. places. I'm going to pass the baton and you go further and yeah. then you, you, you finish the race. Ooh. That's right. But we all have to work together to get the fastest time. Yeah. We can't all, I can't run slower because I don't want you to run. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not like that. It's, we all got to do the same thing to attribute to our own success, especially in our community. Ain't no way someone's telling me I can't do this because you didn't do that. Yes. So what, what? So you want me to live your life? You know what I mean? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, some of them actually do. And yeah. that's what's uh, very sad. They want to, or in some cases where, they missed out on their dreams mm. and they want to relive it through mm. you. So they impose their, I wish I could have, mm. on you. Mm. You must be this, be a doctor, be an engineer, be a lawyer, mm. do this. When you tell them about your actual passions and your ambitions, they discredit it and mm. say, oh, get over it. If you mention like you want to create an art, get over it. Mm -hmm. Where's art going to get you? Entertainment, mm -hmm. get over it. Mm -hmm. That's not a serious job. That's mm -hmm. not a serious career. Mm -hmm. And a lot of Parents have been guilty of killing their children's dreams. Mm -hmm. And where some children ended up um, following or being obedient, mm -hmm. as their parents said, they got to a certain age where they now resented their Resent, parents because yeah. they felt exactly. like, you know what, mm -hmm. this isn't the life that I chose. I it's did this life. to please this individual. This individual is mm -hmm. not even here anymore. And I'm not happy in this profession. And that's, and that's how I think, shout out to my parents, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> Even in that sense, they want me to go uni yeah. so badly. They want yeah. me to do uni so badly. Yeah, and I'll, I'm doing it for them. You right, I mean? right. It's really, truly. It's like, if I'm making it personal to me, my parents wouldn't expect me to be in the career I am in, mm -hmm. and I still get kind of a bit of backlash from them. Kind of right. uh, like basically saying, okay, like how come you're doing this and being different? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of go uni, be as smart as possible, or be all of that, get as many qualifications as possible, and then you can start your life. You know I mean? Right, right. But I kind of adopted the mentality that, or well, I found myself in a position where I couldn't turn back. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I've gotten so far in such a short amount of time, mm -hmm. turning back didn't make sense. Yes. Right. And to some people, they don't understand because they don't get the situation I'm in, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't understand that. But I never let my parents really rain on my dream like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, they just want me to do what I want to do. Yeah. They're not like, you know, they're not like other parents I know that are like, you must do this, you must be this career. Mm -hmm. They're more like, you go out, 
be your passion itself as long as it makes sense. Yeah. And they right. wanted to just protect me in the sense yeah. that they want they don't want my life to go down the drain because mm. I chose a different option. Yeah. I understand yeah. yeah. So they just want me to be secure and it have make sense, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. with that, you know, like they don't really care what job I have. It's just as long yeah. as it's cool. So yeah. with that there's a lot more parents that are like and like you said, they breed resentment between their families because they are trying to live their dream of being someone through their kids mm-hmm. and they kind of want to use it as oh my kids are doctor to other people other yeah, parents. yeah yeah to brag it's, yeah it's a competition so, to yeah brag it's a competition and, really. and that's really wrong that's really it's abuse really it's true. abuse, yeah, it's abuse of um, someone's life like 100%. making them um it's almost like a game it's a game a game i had a kid like, yeah. i had i birthed you into this world mm-hmm. now that means i have the right to do something yeah this, you know, i only you're my object yeah i mean yeah and and that comes from their parents yes. having that, yeah. you know, you know, their parents did that to them. Mm. So to them it's normal. To mm. them it's oh, okay. I know it. You might feel angry about this, but when you get to my age, you understand. Right. But if you think about it, if they didn't have kids, would they understand? Mm. It's because you've had kids now. You've adopted that role, and yeah. you continue that cycle. Yeah. Without kids, you'd think, oh, I'm very excited now. My parents didn't let me do all of this. I'm mm. in this menial job I don't really like. Yeah. But kids change everything, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Then you have a kid, then you can be like, oh, you know what, forget it. He's going to be the difference maker. In right. Mm-hmm. He's going to be the one to, she's going to be the one to, you know what I mean? So I think it's a cycle that definitely needs to be broken. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it, like I said, every kid's dream is more attainable now. And seeing other people do it way more successful than they could ever imagine, mm-hmm. it's hard to say, it's hard to really stop a kid from being ambitious. I right. Think. This is the most ambitious time ever. Every single girl on the Instagram has the potential to be an influencer. Yeah. Everyone. Everyone. Yeah. And they realize that because you'll see a bunch of people. Go grab someone's phone, check their explore page. You'll see a bunch of same people. Yeah. Same ideology, same yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they now believe that can be them, that next person can be them. Mm-hmm. And it's a possibility. Same with boys everyone believes they can be the next internet comedian right the next ba- internet basketball superstar yeah football superstar yeah because now you can see that like Jaden Sancho is one of us he's a superstar yeah this um, Nella Rose is one of us she's gone clear do you know what I mean and that, when that's more attainable when you start seeing that on a day to day basis and that's what you're engaging with the young fillies of the world kids are like no I can do that I can do that and that's the message they put forward that's the message I put forward right. anything's possible mm-hmm. you know what I mean like, anything is possible if you really believe in yourself it's making sense to you I'm not saying go out there and do crazy things mm-hmm. but let's say your rapping career hasn't really taken off like that but you're ahead of where you should have been or you should be should be yeah. you're ahead of the curve really you can go somewhere with that. Right. you might not be Platinum artist, but it's silver, you know, you're good, like you're good, you're comfortable, <laughs> it's like, you know what I mean? Silver. Yeah, <laughs> not even gold, it's yeah. a silver. Nah, nah, but like a silver <laughs> artist at a young age, a really young age, it's yeah. crazy, you know what I mean? Yeah. If you're doing certain numbers at a young age now, like, like rap is a big example, no one would have thought drill would have been a thing, yeah. a popular thing, I'm and no one thought a drill artist could go mainstream ever, you know. So when a draw artist is going mainstream now, and now you see, you see kids now are in plugged in, they're in kind of what freestyle environments on YouTube now, on Link Up, Link Up TV, you know what I mean, Graham Daily, and they're getting their stuff posted out. Now all of a sudden it's, it's a possibility, yeah. And it's harder to dampen that dream. It's way, way, way harder to dampen that dream. When no one was doing it, it's hard to even imagine it. Mm. It's hard to imagine before drill. Who thought drill was going to be a thing? Yeah. Who thought, okay, cool, all the man in ends now, instead of going and doing certain things, let's just go studio. Yeah. They still do certain things, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But they're clocking on that this can't take me far. Yeah. Studio can take me far. Yeah. You know what I mean, music can take me far. So then you, you go into the booth now, you made a drill song, all of a sudden it goes crazy. So yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's a lot more difficult to, I think where it comes from is, there's a lot of 
that for everyone to succeed, some people have to fail. Yeah, right. And I think your parents now and all parents, if when I'm a parent, is going to have that kind of fear of failure for mm-hmm. my children. Not necessarily for my own life, but for your children. And obviously, if you're, if you're afraid to fail, you're not, you know, um, you're kind of blocking your blessing in the sense that you won't achieve. Right. And I, I think that principle, even though it's hard to get, like, really get around, especially for our generations, our older generation, that principle actually applies to parenting. Right. If you're f- very afraid your child's going to fail doing this thing that they find passionate, yeah. then you're not going to, you're probably going to do things that are going to restrict them yeah. rather than let them grow. Uh, ooh. I definitely agree with that. So would you say that that's a fear that they have within themselves as well? Yeah, because, you know, because if my child fails, I fail as a parent. That's kind of, that's just how, like, even though that's a weird way of thinking, mm-hmm. that's how it is. Because, like, it's weird because your child's life's not your life, but yeah. you are, are, are responsible for many things. Right. Personality, everything, you're responsible. Yeah. Right. You, you started working on the kid from a young age. Very young age, socialising, bringing the kid into the world is, is one thing. And then bringing the world to the kid is another thing. Right. Shout out to Drake. Like, that's a whole thing, you know what I mean? So... If you've now, you know, put your kid in a direction that's secure and safe and mm-hmm. has a high percentage of producing mm-hmm. results, mm-hmm. then naturally you're just like, you know, I've done my job. Right. But if your kid's gone another way that isn't, doesn't have that same success rate and you have no way of bringing that kid back on your track or no way of imposing your will onto that child and protecting them, protecting them, because that's what it is, you're trying to protect them. And when they fail, if they fail, I should say, you'll feel responsible for it. So I think that's where it's difficult for, for people to kind of, some parents do it now, they let their kids live type thing. But I think that's where you need to be securing yourself. Yeah. Securing yourself that if this kid does fail, mm-hmm. I can pick them back up. Right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. But because of a generational gap and the inability to get through to your children, or my, not my children, but, the older generation inability to get through to our generation and because that's there's that divide that kind of helping hand isn't there we feel like it's not there at all mm. and they feel like they can't be there because right. they, we won't let them yeah and that just that's a whole that's a whole thing i think that's just a whole big thing wow 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 i mean in terms of how i look at it now it seems like your generation is determined and they're going to mm. achieve what they want to achieve Mm -hmm. now it's in the best interest of the older generation to take an interest on what their children are actually doing Mm -hmm. in order for a partnership a genuine partnership to take place within the house house, not just the household within society Mm -hmm. as a whole so i think it's very beneficial for that gap to definitely be bridged because we don't want it to get to a case where you then disregard them Mm -hmm. or a resentment is because mm-hmm. we spoke about resentment based on them yeah, imposing the will on you and there's also the resentment of they had no interest of in what i wanted to do mm-hmm. and when something is in you there's a high chance that you could also repeat that to your children as well so the main key is what must we do in order to bridge that gap i mean we clearly we both need each other but it's a matter of what do we do how do we come away from previous systems that are no longer working in order to adapt to the new however with the older generation as they live longer it's hard to get to them sometimes and the best way for them to actually listen is actually when they actually see results and when they actually see that certain things are working however this is our time up for today myself and my guest dylan this is part one of bridging the gap so in part two we're going to be speaking about some of the methods that we can actually use we're going to dive deep into it and even get some guests who are actually from that generation just to hear from them and they may tell us their story from when they were younger and how things were between themselves and their parents so for me to you i'm patrick and this is we'll catch you guys next time on me versus me take care